Hello, welcome to the World Poetry Cafe Family Tent. My name's Sue Hardy Dawson and um, I'm a children's poet. I'm going to read you a few poems and um, give you maybe a writing idea at the end for some things that you could do yourself. Um, this first poem is a bit of a football poem. Um, I'm not very good at ball games and so here's some things you might do if, like me, you might need a bit of support. It's called How to Score a Penalty. Wearing Grandad's boots that scored the winner back in 52. Always tie the left boot first, then insist on waiting till the moon is full. Sprinkle the pitch with four-leaf clover. Bury a sixpence under a stile. Wish on a star, consult the heavens. Promise a witch, your firstborn child. Check your horseshoes right side up. Swear an oath on a loved one's grave. Though tricky, dragon's teeth are handy for stopping goals from being saved. Buy a talisman from a friendly wizard. Avoid black cats and poisoned roots. Lastly, test the wind direction. But never close your eyes and shoot. So there's a few things that you could do. Now I'm quite fond of a fairy tale. Um, this one is actually in a shape. If you can see that there, I know it'll be back to front. Uh, this one is called the Frog Princess. See if you can spot any differences from the, the one that you know. Well, okay, Dad, it was something like this. At first I found him slimy and I regret wet. I know, of course, looks aren't everything, I just really aren't sure about green. So what if I did find, he did find my golden ball? I didn't once mention a kiss, more like I put him gently over the wall. Oh well then, maybe as you suggest, it was the teeniest little kick. Then naturally I ran and ran as only a really true princess can in silly shoes and a dress. I never once dreamed that he would follow. No, Dad, stop, don't say a word. Imagine this. Wanted to sleep on my pillow to eat off the very same plate. It really isn't hygienic, a point I tried but failed to make. Well, at any rate, I saw a flash and all at once he was such a dreamy date. So we live in a pond where he's king and the children will hatch in early spring. Yes, it seems that love changes everything. Now, um, I have two dogs and my dogs live in the country and they are used to grass and fields, but I uh, had once uh, cause to visit a city with my dogs um, and they weren't really sure about the city. They weren't really used to it. They found it very interesting, but it found it quite um, challenging, I think. So I spent quite a lot of time walking around at night trying to convince them that they were in fact outdoors and it was OK. Um, for them to be there and this really caused this poem to get written it's called city dogs one dog knows grass is square that trees are lined across the road and litter bins form sullen packs he stalks dull pavements greasy paths tracks fat cars drenched with diesel breath sniffs parched moss for struggled weeds or rats that hover under cracks one dog reads wall, door, eat a cologne of city cats, does old poor shuffle or long claw taps in a Burberry coat or tartan slacks, down alleys bright with grey lamplight. He chats by neon cosy cafes, or under bridges vacant flats, sips an oilskin looking glass. One dog guards his patch of tenements, laundrettes, his a la carte refuge sack. He keeps from mongrels country curs, wild beneath the pylon stacks. Grizzled, raggle, taggle, spare, he spikes the night with snaps and scraps, calling out for air, air, air. So this um, is um, a, a poem 
that I actually wrote for my mum. Um, in it there are lots of things that you might be able to spot if you listen carefully. Things that the, um, the child in the poem doesn't really know are what we call transient, things that aren't necessarily going to stay for very long. Um, and this poem is called The Kiss. I found an autumn necklace in the hedge, silken threads strung with tiny beads. Yet when I touched a strand, it fell, leaving only scattered tears. I found a winter diamond on the wall, cold and sharp as dragon scale. Yet though I locked it in a box, somehow it stole itself away. I found spring dancers in the wood, their faces reaching for the sun. Yet when I put them in a glass, each grew heavy on its stem. I found a summer moon beside the road, floating in a shallow pool. Yet as I lifted it, it broke. I cried I'd meant to let it go. Mum wrapped me in her warm, strong arms, showed me the moon, still warm, small and new. Some things, she said, cannot be owned. Then gave me a kiss. I have it still. So that's a few poems from Where Zebras Go. I'm going to read you a few from this book now. Uh, this is a poem called The Book Thief. And in it there are lots and lots of different stories. So you might be able to spot some of the stories that are in it. The Book Thief. I've stolen stories from a wishing well, taken tales from a lion that could speak. I've hitched with a witch, used straw to stitch. Seen a mountain's flare and dragon's teeth. I've kept a kiss from a sleeping princess, made off with a crown from a unicorn. I've travelled the waves on a mermaid's tail, felt the earth shake beneath a dinosaur. I've opened doors into magic trees, picked the lock on a giant's oak chest. I've trespassed on roads made of fine fairy gold stowed away in a green ogre's nest. I've taken a thorn from a tiger's toe, swiped a rare pirate map for a dare. I've had sandwiches too with a bear from Peru, yet they swear that I've stayed in this chair. Now this is a bit of a scary one. I'm sure we all like a bit of a scary tale called A Dark Tale. Once upon a moonless, starless night, in the total absence of light, where the clouds hung heavy as bricks in a mist so thick it could stick, under the drip, drip, drip of a creaking, crumbling bridge, dank below the grimy, grassy bank, and jet shadows of blank water, of the black and greasy river, beneath the deep, deep, deep rocking of the cold and murky drift of faceless ghosts of sleeping fish, down further still and silent dream, of slimy pebbles, bloomy weeds, it was so very, very, very dark. Now then, I don't know about you, but I've uh, often wondered what it is that, um, that dogs like about the moon, but they do seem to have a, an affinity with it. I suppose it has an effect on all life on Earth. Um, so this is really um, 
Dog Explaining what it is he likes about the moon. It's called Dog Explains the Moon. The moon is an apple, said Rat. See how it changes from rosy to blue. So fat and ripe, it must taste most sweet. Only those who have tasted it truly know. Oh, what rubbish is this, said Toad. You must all see that it's a shimmering pool, so round and full of glittering fish. It's the diamond scales that change its hue. I never heard such tosh, said Hare. In fact, it's the eye of a fearsome wolf, so fleet and wild with teeth made of stars. Its pelt is darkness, its manners cruel. Oh, what nonsense is that, said Bat. To be sure it's a silver moth, you fools. So soft and stout that it sleeps all night, on wings made of light that barely move. This is but idle talk, said Cat, for it is a saucer of cream in truth. So thick and warm as any might wish, yet once every month again it's full. Oh no, that's not it, said Dog. For isn't it strange that it has no smell? But one day soon it will surely fall, and then when it does, I'll be waiting. Ooh. Now, I don't know about you, but I've had some um, friends when I was young who, um, who wanted quite a lot for their friendship. So this is um, a bit of a poem about that. It's called A Forfeit. He said, to prove you love me, go climb the farthest mountain. Bring from its peak a piece of sky still wrapped in pale blue cotton. He said, if you care about me, pluck me a phoenix feather, prime its quill with dragon tears, then write me an enchanted letter. He said, to show real feeling, I must walk across an ocean and weave a net of diamonds to catch fish from a mermaid's fountain. He said, if you plain adore me, bring the fall at the world's end. Give me the moon, set the stars before me. I said, let's just be friends. <clears throat> Now then, <clears throat> as a poet, I get to meet quite a lot of other poets. And this is a poem about all the different kinds of poets that I know. So any other poets who are out there, you may recognise yourself in amongst all of these. Some poets, some poets are loud. They jump and they shout, use different voices, caper about, wear bright neon socks, like you to clap. But no, I'm not a poet like that. Some poets are quiet, hate a riot. They may give you the look, seem self-reliant. Just hang out with books, commune with cats. But no, I'm not a poet like that. Some poets play songs or bang bongo drums. They can strum a guitar, yodel or hum. They reggae, hip hop, sing blues or rap. But no, I'm not a poet like that. Some poets are bards, they take to the boards. Shakespearean players at sonnet stars. They love a good drama, disguises, hats. But no, I'm not a poet like that. Some poets are timid, only a whisper. They conjure up sunshine, snow in winter. Charmers of birds, butterflies, bats. No, I'm not a poet like that. Some poets just dream and stare lots at trees, a little forgetful, fond of the sea. On the bus, they scribble words on the bus in the bath. What, am I a poet like that? Well, perhaps. Now, I think it's time maybe bit of a writing idea. 
So I thought what we might do, I have a poem in here called Found Poem. If I can find it. Here we are. Um, now a found poem, I don't know if uh, any of you are aware of a found poem, but a found poem is usually where you find some words maybe in a book or maybe in a newspaper or maybe just written down somewhere that you find actually turn into a poem. It's, that's the technical meaning of a found poem. Um, but I thought, well, really, you can find poems all over the place. And so this is more of a poem about different places you could find poems. But it's also quite a good one for people to have a go at writing. So I'm going to start off by reading you the poem. It's called Found Poem. I found this poem at the edge of dusk, where jewelled beetle kissed green buds. Words in the wind from the spring songs of bird in a cat's yellow stare. I found this poem. I found this poem beneath wall and street lamp, along the long shadows of river bank. Words tumbling out from rhythms of dark. In an otter's mud lair, I found this poem. I found this poem in a fragment of shell, on a footprint of silver left by a snail. Words written by moth whilst under moon's spell, in a fallen tree's prayer, I found this poem. I found this poem at the edge of dawn, where light took a brush to the grey lawn, words yet unspoken awaiting their turn. In a silence I hear, I found this poem. So each of the verses, as you can see, they're written about the same size. We start off with I found this poem. So let's start ours with I found this poem. So I found this poem. So where we could find, I've got at the edge of dusk, beneath a wall and street lamp, in a fragment of shell, at the edge of dawn. We could find this poem in lots of different places. What about in a dark wood? In a dark wood. We ought to have a bit more of a space between those two. So in a dark wood. So we've got in a dark mood, but we then go on had to have to say something about this dark wood. So we've got at the edge of dusk where a jewel beetle kissed green buds. So in a dark wood, what could we have in a dark wood? We could have leaves falling onto the ground. We could have um, we could have mushrooms growing up or toadstools growing up. We could have ferns. So what about where Let's see it would help if I could spell where um, blue. Bells push up. up through could be through the earth, through shadows, through the dark. We've got dark once, so we won't have dark twice. Through the earth. And then we have to have something where the words come from. So we always start that line with words. So where could the words come from? They don't have to come from the same place, but we can kind of keep it in the in the wood. So perhaps words from the leaves. Words from leaves. What do leaves do? Perhaps they 
low in the wind. So words from leaves, blown by the wind. So I found this poem in a dark wood where blue bulls, bells pushed up through the earth. Words from the leaves, blown by the wind. And then we have to find, I found this poem. So I found this poem, it gives it a bit of a rhythm. So I found this poem in a dark wood where bluebells pushed up through the earth. Words from the leaves, words from leaves blown by the wind. I found this poem. And so you could change any of the other bits and make a few different verses. So that might be a really nice thing to try. So I found this poem in a midnight sky. What would we have in a midnight sky? We could have where stars, stars twinkle, stars glitter over. Grey rooftops. So this time we could have words from something to do with the night. Words from owl, maybe. Instead of blown into the wind, although that would work. Could be carried by clouds or dropped onto clouds because if he's flying about it could be dropped onto clouds. Dropped on to clouds. So I found this poem in a midnight sky where stars glitter over grey rooftops. Words from owl dropped onto a cloud. I found this poem. So you can see how that can be altered and adapted. And you don't have to use exactly the same introduction. You can change anything you like, but it's good to have some repetition in it so that you end up with a rhythm to the poem. So whilst it doesn't actually rhyme, or doesn't have to actually rhyme, Having the repetition, I found this poem and I found this poem and the words here does give it a certain rhythm, which is a, a good thing, a good way of, of holding your poem together. So that's um, one way of writing a poem. Um, let's see, let's have one last, one last go. Let's see where else we could find a poem. I found this poem. Under the sea. Or beneath the sea. Beneath the sea. Change that. Beneath. So quite often it's just tweaking little words around so that it, it just has that rhythm when you read read it out. So I found this poem beneath the sea has a slightly better, a slightly more fluid than, than I found this poem under the sea. So we can't, we could have stars glittering there, but let's have something else because we're under the sea. So we've got where there. So what about um, where weeds, like seaweeds, where weeds, dance. Where are they going to go? We're under the sea, so where are they going to dance? 
So where we stance along the waves, along have green waves. I'm sure you can come up with much better ideas than these. So words, you can have words from a whale. And then we've got a bit of a bit of alliteration, where weeds, words from a whale. And words from a whale, and we can have them carried by the spray, all the spray from the waves. I found this poem beneath the sea, where weeds dance among green waves. Words from a whale, carried by the spray, I found this poem. So you see, you can do quite a lot of that, and it, um, and it works each time. So I think what we'll do is we'll finish off um, with one last poem. Uh, this is um, a poem called Bedtime Story. I was, um, as a child, quite um, a booky sort of little girl. Um, and so I really hated the bit where the um, poem came to an end or the story came to an end and I, I didn't want um, that to happen. And particularly if it was a book I was really enjoying. So this um, is a poem about that. It's called A Bedtime Story. She turns the page climbs inside, away from where day's monsters hide. The minutes tick away unheard on paper hills of printed words. She walks the echo of a stair and sleeps on pillows made of air. Dreads no dragons breathing paint or witches cursing her in ink. The story lion cannot roar. There is no lock on magic doors. Fine leaves of silver, leaves of gold, will never fade or fall to mould. Each night she goes where she can, wanders through imagined lands, a creature of another's pen, the only words she fears that end. So um, those are a few poems from me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed them. Um, there is a little hat at the bottom. If you um, felt inclined, you can put something in that. That would be really good. Um, but other than that, I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, I hope that um, you write a poem. And if you do, don't forget, you can send your poems to Rogers Poetry Zone. Um, they have regular competitions on there it's for young people. Um, so it's um, a really good thing to do if you write a really good poem. Um, and so that's it from me. So goodbye from the uh, World Poetry Cafe family tent.